His Excellency Professor Numan Kurtulmus, Dr. Abdul Razak Makri, Excellencies, and esteemed guests. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and my warmest greetings to everyone. I am pleased to join all of you, albeit remotely, today on the momentous occasion of the sixth conference of the Kuala Lumpur Forum. It is indeed unfortunate that I am unable to be among you today and please accept my apologies. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome and record my sincere appreciation to everyone who had invested their time and expertise to this forum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repay you for your kind deeds towards the betterment of the Ummah, inshallah. And a heartfelt congratulations is in order to His Excellency Dr. Abdul Razak Makri, the Secretariat team and the board of the forum for successfully organizing the event today. Excellencies and esteemed guests, now let's cut to the chase. In this sixth edition of our forum, I would like to focus on the issue of governance, good governance that is. When we speak about governance, we are talking about how we govern our nation, how we administrate it, and the well-being of the citizenry becomes the measure of whether it is good governance or otherwise. The governance that we implement is tailored according to the provisions of our constitution, laws, conventions, and a high degree of our culture and customs. Generally, for as long as we govern within the confines of these provisions, the government and leaders will be judged as having delivered good governance. But it is not as simple as it sounds, especially given the complexity of the modern society today, when new values and conventions emerge to challenge conventional wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests, by and large, the majority of nations have accepted democracy as the preferred system of government, while democracy provides the broad guidelines of how a system of government should function, most nations will have their system tailored to suit local conventions, customs, and culture. In the Muslim world, for example, incorporating the teachings of the Quran and its injunctions into its laws and governance are commonplace and this is expected and supported by the majority of its people, a prerequisite of a functioning democracy. However, the emergence of human rights, for example, as an essential component in democracy, even if it is advocated by a minority and opposed by the majority, the expectation is that the government and leaders must observe and uphold it, even if there were no persecution of the minority, and that the demands of the minority group offend and contradict the values and beliefs system of the majority, the will of the minority must be given consideration most of the time. Otherwise, it will be deemed as a persecution of the minority. And no matter how good the government and leaders have ruled the nation, they will be categorized as dishing bad governance. We have witnessed how Qatar in hosting the FIFA World Cup is being ridiculed and censured by advocates of Western 
democracy for refusing to allow the promotion of symbols supporting the LGBT community. These advocates chose to ignore the sovereignty of Qatar and its laws, which is grounded on the teachings of Islam, which forbids and criminalizes LGBT. But this is not only a Qatari dilemma, but rather one that for years had been placed on the Muslim world and nations. Ladies and gentlemen, lest we forget, regime changes and the Arab Spring were triggered by the issue of governance. Muslim leaders were toppled and replaced by Western candidates for failures to govern well, persecuting the minority, crime against humanity, and being undemocratic. But when we peel the layers of all these accusations, we will discover that their main crime is actually because they refuse to toe the line drawn by the Western world or that they refuse to pander to their whims. Otherwise, how do we explain their keenness to destroy and devastate a whole nation merely to punish a Muslim leader allegedly for being a despot when they can arm and empower a whole nation like Israel that commits genocide, apartheid, willful crimes against humanity and all the atrocities against humanity that is even beyond our imagination. Simply put, good governance is not about how the Muslim world governs its people, but rather how it pleases the Western powers. Ladies, gentlemen, and esteemed guests, however, despite all the Islamophobia that is being promoted in the West against Muslim nations and leadership, that should not be a justification for us to ignore good governance. While we can blame the West of the nauseating hypocrisy, the Muslim world and its leaders must also look within and accept that some of us are not the best of leaders and governments. Some level of degeneration, stagnation and difficulty to achieve civilizational renewal had manifested in poor levels of education and a depleted spirit of creativity and innovation, a lack of interest in the human resource development, widespread negligence, lack of awareness, incapacitation and laziness on unprecedented skills. We have to seriously ask ourselves as to why, despite Muslim nations and leaders being extremely rich and our youth, whom many among them are scholars and geniuses, yet our ummah are among the poorest. The greatest indicator of failure is the migration of these same minds and their peoples from their countries elsewhere. How terrible are these images of Muslims dying at sea, attempting to migrate to developed countries. It is the ultimate disgrace to our leaders that this happens under their rule. And yet we must not despair. Muslims must build a global human civilization that lasted centuries and excel in innumerable fields. And the revelation in the Quran as their motivation in pursuing science, innovation, and development. Apart from the tyranny from the Islamophobic West, it would also seem that the problem then is not Islam, but rather Muslims themselves. If Muslims return to adoption of their Islamic morals, they would once again possess all the capabilities necessary for their advancement. Islam 
and its teachings are all for good governance. The Quran is full of guidelines and examples of good performance. Justice is repeatedly narrated in the Quran as being honest, trustworthy, incorruptible, good values and ethics. They are consistent and even better than the values and principles provided in democracy and as such, our existence and pursuit of the Islamic teachings should actually be the benchmark of good governance and not the other way around. After all, when the contemporary world speaks about globalization, the Islamic civilization had already achieved that during the Golden Age. Ladies and gentlemen, however, we cannot live in past glory. Given the years of how the Muslim world had regressed, it is incumbent upon us to accept that we need to embrace the new world and its rapidly changing technology if we were to compete and establish good governance. In the final analysis, good governance is key to development, prosperity and resilience but it must be adapted to the new and emerging realities. On that note, I wish you all a successful forum. I thank you. <laughs>